Okay, uh, I figured it would be easier for me to create a video instead of uh <coughs> writing down a shit ton of text which would take me like an hour. So I'll just uh, show you what I did the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've been a little bit absent uh, due to real work and real life stuff, but I'm getting back on track with the stuff we need to do for LibGDX. So the first big thing is the 3D API. I already blocked about that a couple of times. Um, we are now at the point where we have our custom formats, uh, text-based formats, which are really simple, and a binary format, which uh, is a little bit like binary JSON, uh, and really fast to load and really flexible, so we can put in anything we want, really, uh, with keeping backwards compatibility. Works a little bit like a DOM tree. Um, and apart from that, we also wrote a couple of loaders. Uh, we have Collada loader, we have loaders for our custom format, we have an MD2 loader, we have the Ogre 3D loader for skeletal models, and we have a new Wavefront OBJ loader by Eric, which can also handle groups, as far as I know, and I think he's working on material support. Um, the preferred way of loading uh, stuff for the 3D API is going through our formats. Um, we will provide custom exporters for all the big modeling uh, software out there. So at the moment I'm focusing on Blender, uh, which is free software, so that's always a plus, and on Softimage, because uh, Shiyu, the guy is, who's doing the Cubop graphics, uh, is working with Softimage. There's a free uh, version of Softimage called Mod Tools, uh, or Mod Tool. You can use that and use our exporter scripts with that. There's a passage which says you can only use it for non-commercial stuff. So be aware of that and judge for yourself how you want to use it. In any case, you could also use Blender. Uh, the 3D uh, API consists of a couple of things. Um, the most important one is the model interface. So a model represents a 3D object you load from a format. A 3D object loaded consists of a couple of meshes, which we call sub-meshes. If you imagine, for example, a tank composed of multiple uh, objects like its torso, its turret, and the chains, those would be three submeshes, which would be separate from each other. Um, apart from the submeshes, a model also consists of materials. You can have one material per submesh. Um, material specifies things like the color of the submesh, uh, textures used. Um, and for shader programming, probably also things like uniforms <coughs> or constants, stuff like that w you need uh, in your shader to do some special effects. Uh, this also includes stuff like bump maps and, and specular maps and stuff like that. So it's really simple to use, so I'll show you how to do that uh, in a bit. Um, so that's our base interface, and we have three different kinds of models. We have a still model which is basically just implementing straight this interface. Uh, a still model is a static model, so it is not animated. You export a couple of meshes into a single model file uh, in whatever format you want, and it will be loaded as a still model which only has submeshes. Uh, the second format, or the second model type we have, is a keyframed model. Uh, Keyframed models are uh, working like the old MD2 format to some extent. We made it a little bit more fancy, so you can actually animate uh, UVs as well, which can come in handy when you want to do stuff like floating lava and etc. etc. Um, a keyframed model is an animated model, and all animated models share the same interface. So they implement the model interface and they implement the animated model interface. And uh, Setting the animation for a model uh, is really fucking simple. You just say set the animation, the animation name, the time within the animation, and whether it's looping or not. Uh, that's like totally sufficient for a hundred percent of use cases usually. Uh, we are providing you full access to all the internals as well if you need something more specific or more special, which is not covered by this thingy. So the animated model interface is implemented by the keyframe model, which uses keyframes. Uh, this means it's really seriously fucking fast to interpolate and animate, but it takes up quite a bit of, of memory. Shouldn't be a problem in most cases. And then there's the skeleton model, which uh, uses bones to perform the animation, or rather the 
vertex uh, vertex planning and vertex uh, 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 yeah you know what I mean <laughs> so those are your options for animated models uh, at the moment we support the keyframe model a little bit better because uh, our three D format uh, we we already have exporters for that for our own custom format we don't have an exporter for skeleton models yet for any of the modeling programs like Blender or Softimage. So this will take a little bit. Um, you can currently load skeletal models from Ogre 3D XML files. Um, that works pretty well. <coughs> okay, so you have a model. Each model consists of a submesh. Animated models also have animations. You can set the animation pose of a model with the set animation uh, method, and you have materials on a per submesh basis. So materials are pretty fucking easy as well. If you've played around with meshes, you already know vertex attributes, like a vertex attribute for position, a vertex attribute for a texture coordinate set, stuff like that. Materials work exactly the same. You have a material which has a name and a bunch of material attributes. One such a material attribute could be a texture attribute, which basically just binds uh, a texture and uses that while rendering a submesh of a model. So that's really fucking simple. Um, we have a couple of test applications uh, for the different model uh, um, model types. Uh, you can check out the trunk. Uh, it's contained in extensions, model loaders, model loaders, this, 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 in a tests package. Uh, and there's a couple of viewers and stuff you can play around with and get a grip of how stuff will work with the new 3D API. So you basically just load your model with whatever loader you have. Then you load your texture, then I create a material and say, okay, this material is named material and it has a single attribute, which is a texture attribute, uh, which will be bound to the <coughs> uniform named as text if you use shaders. If you don't use shaders, this is ignored. This is the texture unit it's going to be bound to. And then you just tell the model to set that material for all its submeshes. You can also set the material for an individual submeshes. Uh, since this is a keyframed model viewer, I also get the first animation from the keyframed model, which I will then use to animate and render this stuff. And here's how we render this stuff. I just set the animation based on the animation time and the animation name. Then I tell the model to render itself. That's easy. And that's how all the model types work. So load, set material, set animation if it's an animated model type, render. That's it can also get things like the current bounding box of the animation pose and stuff like that. Okay, so that okay, so that's the first thing we worked on. And here's a sneak peek at the second thing I've worked on for Cubeup, which is a tiny skinnable UI library uh, based on Scene2D and Nate's totally fucking awesome table layout uh, extension. And here's how it looks like. <coughs> Gonna fire up uh, my Notepad plus plus in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So here's how the UI works like. Uh, this is a scroll pane, and within the scroll pane, there's another pane which has a couple of widgets, and within that other pane, there's a second scroll pane, as you can see which is just making sure that you can scroll a list. You can put anything inside a scroll pane and you can lay out your stuff in a table, just like with table layouts in Swing or the Migu or whatever it was called layout. Uh, yeah, we have a set of standard widgets like sliders, checkboxes, toggle buttons, uh, normal buttons, uh, lists and I'm currently working on trees and other common things like text input boxes and so on and it's a joy to work with especially with Nate's table layout and it should be really easy to use it of course has a couple of limitations you can't rotate a UI due to the way we have to clip things we can only clip screen aligned boxes so rotation is out of the question but you can easily use cameras and scale and even tween stuff, so that all works as long as you don't use rotations. Um, yeah, apart from that, um, there's not a lot I can say. Actually, you can fully skin this shit. So uh, you do this by defining an XML file where you have a library of graphical assets like nine patches, uh, like normal texture regions. 
uh, and like colors. Whoopsie. Yes, so you have nine patches, regions, texture regions, and colors, as well as fonts. And then you can define for each widget we have, we offer uh, a, a style. So for a button, I have a style which is uh, called default, which will be used uh, if you instantiate a button without specifying a style. And here I define which nine patches to use for the button state when it's down, one nine pa w another nine patch for when it's up, as well as the font and the font color to be used for the text that's on the button. And you do the same for all other widgets and you can have multiple styles for a widget type. So I could easily create a second uh, style which is called my crazy style which uses a completely different um, completely different nine patch. Uh, so I can actually do that right now. Um, I can use I, I'll just modify the button style which is currently using rounded edges or rounded nine patch which looks like this here and I will make it uh, rectangular 9-patch and I have a debugging 9-patch which has only a border of a single pixel so this will look like shit but I don't care that much so let's see we have the rect down and the rect up let's restart the application dun 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 Okay, so as you see, I changed the style of the buttons. Of course, this looks crazy as cr ugly, but I'm not too worried. This is a toggle button, uh, and that has its own style. So the normal button style didn't get applied to the toggle button because we didn't modify the toggle, toggle button which it style. Um, you define these layouts with uh, table layout, and I chose to do it programmatically at the moment. So that's the entire code for the UI you just saw. I basically just uh, load the sk skin, create a new stage, then I, load, then I create a button from the skin, checkbox, labels, sliders, toggle button, lists, and finally I create a container. And that container just works like this. You say what l alignment you want, then you add widgets, uh, and they will be added to the same row. When we want to start a new row, you just say container row and continue with adding new other widgets. So this is one container and I, u I put that container into a scroll pane. So if the container has a bigger uh, size than the scroll pane, the scroll pane will show you scroll bars so you can easily uh, uh, scroll around on your bigger container. This also this works for any actor by the way. So you can put in an image, you can put in text, you can put in even more complex UI layouts, you can do whatever you want. As long as you don't use rotation, it will just work. Okay, so that's the things we've been working on. I'm uh, really tight on time, so I can't give you an ETA when this will go public. The 3D stuff is public. The UI stuff, I just started on yesterday. So give me a little bit of time and I will eventually move it to um, an extension. I can't put it in core because it relies on table layout and we don't want to have a dependency on table layout in the GDX core. So it will probably uh, be used like you can currently use DWL for UIs. Okay, so that's it. Hope that makes sense.